Ruff is bigger than you! Big one! It's gone, I'm going that way! You got it, <laughs> How do you feel, Rob? <laughs> On top of the world! Let me take you back to where it all began. Last year, I was invited out by Rob Torelli, a spearfishing legend, multiple world record holder, and arguably one of the best divers in Australia of all time, with 10 national spearfishing titles under his belt, the most titles anyone has ever won. Rob has had a career working both as a spearfishing guide and also as an underwater videographer, helping to film documentaries for National Geographic, but is now currently working as an abalone diver. I could go on talking for ages about what Rob has achieved, but no doubt is he one of Australia's most accomplished divers. Well anyway, he'd asked me to come out and film him attempting to shoot a giant tuna barrel. I knew Rob at the time had been out on a few missions chasing them, but was yet to have any luck finding them, so I honestly didn't expect much, and the last thing I expected was to shoot one myself. Little did I know, I was about to experience and witness much more than I bargained for. It's barrel time, baby. Far out. Who told than me? <laughs> ready for this? So ready. Let's go. Yeah. We have Ethan Yo from South Australia. Welcome aboard. We had only been on the water for 20 minutes before we spotted the couple of seals splashing around on the surface. So Rob suggested we jump in and see if there was anything about. And oh boy, wait till you see what else was feeding on the bait. The water wasn't the clearest, but I could see about six massive tuna silhouettes all just cruising around. It was mental to see, and I'd never seen fish that big before. I quickly grabbed the bait and started chumming up the water in order to try and keep them around. Meanwhile, Rob started swiftly getting everything ready to jump in and potentially shoot the biggest fish of his life. But what happened next was the most breathtaking encounter I've ever experienced in the ocean. For the next five minutes, Harry and I were literally swimming with fish bigger than us and they weren't even phased one bit with our presence. It felt like such a privilege being able to swim up close with these magnificent beasts. They were cruising all over the place and to be honest, I was definitely feeling a bit intimidated. But there was this one particular fish that came right up to the surface and was feeding practically out of my hand. This went on for a while, and the whole time I was thinking, come on Rob, you missed now on all the action. Anyway, literally just as Rob had finished suiting up and loading his blue water cannon, the barrels disappeared, and all that was left was this pesky albatross. Rob being the experienced diver he is, wasn't too worried, as he knew they would still be hanging around, and it was just a matter of time before we came across them again. And of course, he was right. About 40 minutes later, we were back in business. Tuna. With Rob doing what he does best, he remained calm and just patiently waited for a shot he was confident taking. Because the last thing you want is to take a poor rush shot, which is just asking for trouble, especially with fish of this size. He managed to get a perfect holding shot and the fight was on. He had hurt the fish real good, but it wasn't backing down and took him for a bit of a ride. After about a 10 minute fight, the fish began to tire out and Rob was able to slowly pull it up 
and clip it off to the float so that he could dispatch it with a second shot. As a fish of this size isn't one you want to try and dispatch with a knife because there's the risk that if you get it to the surface while it's still alive, it could potentially do another run and drag you under. Seeing Rob land this fish felt like a privilege to witness and will be a memory I'll never forget. Oh! Yeah, Rob! Woo! You got a real good shot of that one as well, hey? Woo! Heard, it, heard it real good. Oh, yeah. How do you feel, Rob? <laughs> On top of the world. <laughs> we came, we saw, we conquered. Come out this morning from Port Mag. Got in about 20 metres of water. We'd only been underwater 20 minutes. We started seeing the seals. I said to the boys, if we see the seals, we'll work them. Well, the rest is history. The boys, I was a bit, them, them three were in their wetsuits. They were ready to go. So for the first 10 minutes, they were hand feeding them. And in amongst the big bluefin tuna, I'm getting kitted up, trying not to get too excited. And then they all disappeared. Oh. <laughs> so what did we do? We just started working the area again. We seen the seals, saw the red bait, in of the chum. And that's the end result. I'm just stoked. Really, really happy to get oh. a nice fish. And it means a lot to me, especially with you guys. Thank you very much. Woo! <laughs> yeah, Harry! <laughs> Two. Two. So after we finished screaming, celebrating, taking photos, Rob turned to the three of us and said, so who's next? All three of us just stood there in silence, looking at each other, not wanting to be the one to put up a hand, even though we all knew we wanted to shoot one. After what felt like forever, Harry chimed up and said, I think Ethan should go next, since he invited us and we wouldn't be here if it weren't for him. Brad also agreed and as much as I wanted Harry and Brad to have a shot, I really couldn't say no to the opportunity that was just presented before me. So I think Ethan's up next. So I kindly accepted the offer and, well, nothing could have ever prepared me for what was about to come. My heart was racing at the time, knowing there was a chance I was about to shoot a fish of a lifetime. All the signs were still there with plenty of bait and seals, but the barrels were yet to rock up. So we continued the search, looking for any signs of life in the middle of the ocean. After spending a good hour searching and constantly jumping in and out of the boat, I was honestly beginning to lose motivation and starting to feel quite fatigued, as this was also my first dive post COVID and had only been out of isolation for a few days. I was contemplating giving up and letting one of the other guys have a turn when all of a sudden, we spot the massive bust up off in the distance of barrels smashing the surface. Straight away, the whole mood lifted and we knew we were onto something promising. For safety reasons and also to film, Rob told me to wait for him to be in the water before I took a shot. Because earlier that year, he had a very up close and personal encounter with a four and a half metre hungry great white shark while out chasing tuna. So I sat on the edge of the boat waiting for the call to jump in, trying to keep my heart rate down. But while approaching the school, I heard the dreaded and anyone who owns a GoPro knows what that sound means. My GoPro had just run out of batteries and in my head, I was like, you got to be kidding me. Could the timing be any worse? I wasn't gonna let the stupid GoPro stop me from shooting the fish of a lifetime and just accepted that I wasn't gonna get any footage. The guys dropped me off right in the bus stop and what I saw next 
with something out of a National Geographic documentary. There were dozens of giant tuna and seals everywhere, all flying around, feeding on a massive bait bowl, and I was in the midst of it all. I would do anything to capture what I saw in footage. There would have been easily multiple Australian record sized fish in that school. The whole time I kept on looking up, waiting for up to hop in, so I could shoot one of these beasts. However, just as he jumped in, for some strange reason, the tuna all of a sudden just disappeared and moved on. At the time, I had mixed emotions. I was obviously devastated and thought I'd missed my chance. But at the same time, maybe it was a good thing that I didn't get a shot because I would have got none of it on video for you guys to see. So back in the boat I jumped and I quickly swapped out the batteries and about 40 minutes later, we spotted another school of what seemed to be tuna. Not wanting to miss the opportunity again, Rob told me that if they were there to just take the shot if I had it and not worry about waiting for him. So I jumped in and straight away I could see them off in the distance. I immediately turned on my GoPro, looked to the right and well, the rest is history. At the time, I was only in 25 meters of water and the float line was 30 meters long, so it couldn't physically pull the floats underwater. And in the heat of the moment, everything I ever knew about spearfishing went straight out the window and I went into panic mode. I'd never experienced so much power from a fish and was getting taken for the ride of my life. Should have brought my water skis. I was literally holding onto the line for dear life, hoping that my shot was good enough and would hold. After what seemed like ages, I could feel that the fish had finally begun to slow down, allowing me to make some ground on it. I completely forgot about the clutch system at the time, so I had to pull 30 meters of float line with one hand while getting towed around and trying not to drown. Finally, I managed to clip the fish off to the float and have a bit of a breather before I dived down to put a second shot in and hopefully secure the fish. The slip tip on the real gun that we'd planned to use for the second shot was busted, so I had to use a breakaway setup, which wasn't ideal. Even with two spears in, the fish still had some fight left, easily enough fight to still drown one of us. So to be safe, Rob said to put a third shot in. The third shot did it, and the fight was over. However, the battle wasn't. The hardest part was now pulling up the fish and by this stage I was exhausted and my whole body was cramping up. I had never pulled in a fish this size before or even close. It was almost physically impossible to pull it up and I found I was just pulling myself down. It took around 10 minutes to just pull it up with the full duration of the fight from taking the shot to getting the fish in my hands being just over half an hour. It definitely wasn't pretty and was an absolute mess with line everywhere but I still managed to get the job done, even though I almost killed myself in the process. Fight as well. I just had no energy left at all. Oh. Oh. We did it. Did it. Freaking heck. It's a big fish, eh? To this day, I still can't believe all this happened. It doesn't even feel real yet, but I can't thank you enough, Rob, for giving me this opportunity. None of this would have been possible without you. Thanks to Brad and Harry for coming along as well. Landing the fish like this is all a team effort and I was just the one fortunate enough to pull the trigger. And also thank you to Trelly Spearfishing for providing me with quality dive gear. None of these beautiful fish went to waste and it was all eaten and shared with our family and friends. It is definitely going to be hard to top this fish, but that's what I love about spearfishing. There's forever going to be new challenges awaiting ahead. So come along for the journey as I'm just getting started.